Okay, hello, we've got a tutorial here on sigma notation. This would often be seen with sequences and series, arithmetic, geometric and others. But there's the Greek letter sigma and this simply means the sum. It means you've simply got to add things up. So the sum of something can be denoted by, denoted by sigma. What we need to add up, what we will say is we will put a count. Let's count from one to five. Um, for each of those, what I will do is I will put a count, a k for count obviously, goes from 1 to 5 and the formula 3k plus 1. I simply substitute in to this formula running through 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, going through the count. So if I put 1 in I will see if I substitute 2 into this formula I will see 7, if I substitute 3, and if I substitute 4, and if I substitute 5, I will see that. And I simply need to add those things up, which I think will give me it's that 20, 30, 40, 50, I think it comes to a 50. And so there we go. Um, this illustrates something that we often see with sigma notation in that we quickly get rid of it. It's much easier often to just take a little time to write the series out um, and see what you've got. Quite often you'll have either an arithmetic or a geometric sequence that you'll have ways to deal with. Uh, there are a couple of tutorials on arithmetic and geometric which you might well see links popping up on the screen and if you're unsure about those that's worthwhile just making sure you've got those sorted as well. We'll deal with those during this tutorial with our sigma notation. So let's take a second. Okay, this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the count at 5 um, we don't have to start at 1, we can start anywhere we wish with the count. The only, the only deal is that we must go up in 1s. You can't start counting in 2s or 4s or 8s, so it must go in 1s. So 5, 6, 7, 8, and the sequence, rather the series, because we're going to be up there, there we go, the series is going to be generated by this formula. So we're going to sub. Substitute in 5, then 6, then 7, then 8. Let's put 5 in. Let's put 6 in. Let's put 7 in. I'm quickly going to get a bit tired of this. By the time I get right to the end, I will be putting 30 into that. And I will getting the last one will be 61. What I'm looking at there is I'm looking at an arithmetic... sequence, uh, sorry, series. I'm looking at arithmetic series and I've got a method to add these things up. Um, number of terms divided by two, first term plus the last term. And so I'm looking at the first term here, the last term here. Perhaps the tricky question, not too tricky, but does need thinking about is how many terms. So the sum, the sigma sum, will be. Number of terms, well from 5 to 30 it's tempting to think it's 25. Um, just as a little aside, if you're ever pondering these, just think about perhaps if we went 5 to 6. Now 6 minus 1, sorry 6 minus 5 would give 1, but if we put 5 in, we put 6 in, that would be 2 terms. Um, so 6 minus 5, answer 1, but two terms, therefore 30 minus 5, 25. We're looking at 26 terms here. So sometimes we're thinking about with slightly smaller numbers just to make sure you're on the right track. 
and first term 11, last term 61. So sigma notation really, what we're doing here is we are getting rid of it. And so we deal with the sequence and the series <laughs> as we see it there and then we'll usually have some methods to sort it out. So what have we got? We've got 13 multiplied by 72 which will give us, well let's do a quick bit of calculation, 10 13s, we've got um, sorry, 10 72s, then we've got 2 72s, uh, 172 and if we add those up, 13 times 72, I think that will give us 936. Okay, there we go, 936. And sigma notation, get rid and deal with it as a series. They're not always arithmetic or geometric. Put 1 in, put 2 in, put 3 in, put 4 in, put 5 in. 1 over 1, 1 over 2, 1 over 3, 1 over 4. There we go. I'm not going to add that one up, but that's the sequence we're dealing with there. And let's try one more. This time, what I'm going to do is... Have a look at this one. So if I put 1 in, if I then put always plus, sigma always means plus, always add up, 2 squared, when I put 2 in, substitute 3 in, put 4 in, put 5 in, put 6 in, and all the way to the last term, in which time I'll be putting k equals 10. I look at this, and what I should be seeing is I should be seeing a geometric series and I've got a method to add a geometric series up which is first term multiplier common ratio minus 1 over r minus 1 that's my general formula to add one of these things up first term u1 common ratio the multiplier I'm multiplying by 2 each time number of terms 1 to 10 must be 10 terms minus 1, r minus, oops, I've not done everything I could there, r is 2 minus 1, and so I've got 1024 minus 1 over 1, and there we go. Once again, we don't really deal with sigma notation, what we tend to do is we tend to get rid of sigma notation and have a look at the series and see what we've got. Um, one last point with these, we sometimes get asked to not so much add things up as generate a formula. So what I would do, for example, if I was asked to start the count at 1 and finish the count at n, and let's say we have 3 times 2 to the power k as our formula, what is this asking me? Well, very similar sort of things. What we're asked to do is we're asked to put 1 in, 2 in, 3 in. If we put 1 into the formula, we get 3 times 2. Next one, put 2 into the formula. Next one, put 3 in. And clearly what's going to happen here is that I'm going to get to a point and the only thing that I can write for the very last one is that I will have put n in. So I'm not really going to come up with a final numerical answer, but I'm going to do as much as I can with this. And when I write it out as I have here, things that I can tell you, I can tell you, and I'm sure you've spotted this, this is a geometric sequence or series. This has got um, first term, 
u1 of 6. It's got a common multiplier, common ratio of 2. And the number of terms, I can say no more than n. So I'm going to sigma sum this, and I'm going to tell you that the sum for this, the formula that I have, is that. And I will put in everything that I can. 6. And as far as I can go, really, is this. And it's not uncommon to find us simply stopping with perhaps an N left in or with an R left in, and we just end up with a formula. So sigma notation. What we're saying, sigma notation, for the most part, is something that you will, although convenient and nice to summarise, often if you're going to go any further and deal with and add up, which is what it means, um, sigma means add up, you're going to need to get rid of sigma notation and then deal with the series. without sigma notation. So, in conclusion, always add up when you see sigma, but generate the sequence, see what you've got, and move on from there.